Welcome to YouTube Science Communication. Hi there, my name is Maximus. This is the 60 second video that I'm making for this class. And today we're gonna watch this egg become a newt. Let's back up. I didn't create these images. That credit goes to Jan von Ikun. The assignment for this video was to make a film about Tinbergen's four questions, and I thought, what better backdrop for that than this footage of an animal becoming? In 1963, Nico Tinbergen wrote this paper called On Aims and Methods of Ethology. Ethology is the careful observation of animal behavior, and on its surface, the paper is a retrospective on how, during Tinbergen's lifetime, ethology was integrated into biology. But dig a little deeper, and it becomes clear that what the paper is really about is causation. Tinbergen was asking in four different ways. Why do animals behave as they do? This infolding of the egg is, of course, a very important kind of behavior. Development is something a newt does. Tinbergen divided his causal questions into four categories. Development, mechanism, evolution, and function. When we ask, why does an animal behave as it does, we can answer by describing how the behavior grew, how it works, how it evolved, or what it's for. This diversity of kinds of answers seems reasonable at first, but actually it's deeply strange. Non-life sciences like physics or chemistry don't have four different answers to their causal questions. They have one, mechanism. Open a standard physics textbook and every page will be devoted to how matter works. Nowhere will you find a discussion about what matter is for, what its purpose is. The purpose of an eye is for seeing. Tinbergen writes that no physiologist applying the term eye to a vertebrate lens eye, as well as to a compound arthropod eye, is in danger of assuming that the mechanism of the two are the same. But nonetheless, both are eyes because both have the same function. They both see. The crucial observation is that describing the mechanisms of life, those pushes and pulls that make our bodies what they are, is insufficient to describe the why of life. Why is life the way it is? How does the animal, an unstable, improbable system, manage to survive? Many kinds of eyes can see, but this is only part of the story. One can say that a man is afraid of a flying plane because he sees it, but also because he has been bombed out as a child. The main point is to recognize that both statements may be true, that each covers part of the total causal chain involved, and that the question, what made him behave the way he did, requires a complete answer in which both partial answers are contained. Our history precedes us. We are affected by our pasts, and so too are we affected by our future. In living systems, a potential possibility tomorrow strongly affects what we might do today. This embryo flexes inside its membrane, not because the present moment requires it, but because a future newt-to-be will benefit from the well-coordinated nervous system which this flexing helps develop. And so, the study of causation in life processes must look back in time while at the same time looking forward. Unlike the stars and gases which physics and chemistry help us explain in such detail, there's something about living systems, systems which develop, that is by definition open-ended. It's not just causes that produce effects. Effects themselves feed back on their causes, and the past alone is insufficient to explain the future.
The diversity of ways to answer why that these four questions describe, in contrast to the unifying causal force of mechanism that the non-life sciences champion, tell us that life is something new and unique in the universe. It resists explanation by a single paradigm because much of what a living system is, is yet to be. How can you ever fully explain something which will always be in a continual process of becoming? Tinbergen's answer is to return to an inductive start, to observation and description. Perhaps the purpose of science isn't solely to give us causal explanations. The question, why, is not always the most pressing question to answer. Perhaps, at the core of our science, there's something much simpler. What is? This creature has always been itself, whether in the form of an egg, or an emerging tadpole, or a mature adult. It has always been what it is. And if we observe carefully, we might just get a glimpse at what we are, too. Thanks for watching. This video is part of a class called YouTube Science Communication, where we learn about the history of life on Earth while we learn how to make videos about it together. If you want to make videos alongside us, you can head on over to our Patreon page. There's a lot of info there. And if you want to see more videos like this one, hit the subscribe button and more videos will come your way. I hope you enjoyed this one.